right, and we are live. And as you can see, my my enthusiastic co-host <laughs> is not Chris. So unfortunately, uh, Chris had to cancel. There's uh, They merged with another company, and I guess they merged with a lot of positive COVID <laughs> cases. So several people um, uh, were infected, and uh, so yeah, we're just erring on the side of endless caution. <laughs> Uh, it never ends. It never ends, but we'll make the best of it. Um, and I want to thank, uh, Matt for last week. Um, that was great. Uh, there was, you know, uh, scheduling problems last week as well, but Matt filled in and, and we shot it from home. We recorded from home. So I appreciate that, Matt. That was very, very fun. And speaking of Matt, we played, uh, the quick start for Dragon Bane. Uh, last night was that last night? <laughs> yesterday it was not for me. Uh, yesterday afternoon, and uh, that was fun. It was I, I like those rules. I think they're they're going to have so, uh, some success with that. I, I need to see more. Like I want to see more of the lore of the setting, and uh, like Matt was interested also in character creation uh, and the magic. You know how all of those details are going to work. We've got a few keywords in the quick starter with no uh, mechanics for them, so it should be interesting. Uh, when we get the whole thing. Oh, that's right. There's a, yeah, they did a live stream, a Q and a live stream. Nice. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That was really interesting. We got to test the, uh, the death mechanics, um, at the very end, um, that worked really, or that, that was great. I'm glad we got to see as much as possible because there's a rally, um, a rally action that you can take. So it's a persuade role. And someone that is zero hit points, you can just encourage them to keep fighting. And so they'll stay on their feet. They're still making death rolls. And actually, I think we we may have missed something. They may, There may have been like a bane to all the rolls, or there might have been some other mechanic um, that we might have missed with that. I can't remember. But it's it's a pretty cool... Um, Pretty cool idea because that's the thing that's no fun uh, in a lot of sessions, a lot of like dungeon crawl heavy sessions is a character goes down and it's just like, okay, they're down. Oh, now I'm down. And yeah. so there's nothing to do except stabilize them and, you know, drag their bodies out of the, <laughs> out of the situation. So um, I like that rally idea as well, because especially in situations, they're literally, the party is fleeing and a character gets down as they're fleeing. And so, Everybody either has to turn around and fight their way, you know, back through to uh, retrieve the body, or it, uh, yeah, it's great. And and uh, the uh, uh, the duck race was very fun, especially the anger, <laughs> the anger ability, the anger uh, trait worked uh, worked well. <laughs> it would have been a much easier experience without that angry duck. Uh, yeah, and the um, uh, conditions were interesting as well um uh, i'm surprised to you know, like how many because you you get a condition anytime you push a roll and we use the optional roll push mechanic so um and i don't know why you'd play without it it's such a fun thing i guess if you're more maybe more purist or more you know old school maybe some people don't like that but i think it uh, it worked well and i was surprised how many conditions uh the characters carried and uh yeah yeah i think that yeah overall i think everyone's reaction was positive so that's good. Very good. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to check out that uh, q and I'm curious, um, you know, the, the feedback and things they're responding to and what uh, what things are going to look like. And I really hope that Kickstarter does amazingly well so they, they get a lot of support, you know, put a lot of support behind it because it's fun. It could be a, uh, a go-to fantasy uh, system. I could see that happening. Nice. Oh, that's right. Rally yourself with a bane. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> the duck knight mutter. Yeah, angrily fighting on. Oh, interesting. So you can uh, even, yeah, pull yourself up. I, I like that. There's something nice about that because I think we were playing virtually. We were playing on, on Albert Rodeo, actually. Um, but you can... Uh, but when you're sitting at a table physically and your character is down, it's just like, you know, you just sit back <laughs> and uh, you just disengage uh, uh, from what's going on. So I think having some active mechanic, I think, works well. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's good. And, and yeah, it feels uh, 
new and old and different enough from other things that are going on that I think, uh, yeah, I think it could be a could be a winner. And I love the art. I really love. Um, is it Johan Egerkantz, uh, art the artist from uh, Vesen? Uh, the interior art, you know, at least uh, for the quick start, is is great. So it very uh, puts you in that setting very well. And I think he did for the um, uh, re re release, or yeah, I think he did a lot of work for the re release of uh, uh, Demons and Dragons, Dragon, Dragons and Demons, um, in the Swed in Swedish when Riot Minds uh, had the rights. So we will see. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for being in the chat, Matt. Uh, yeah, yeah, the art is is fantastic. Uh, yeah, I like I like uh, how it, it ins inspires the the setting very much. I wanted to see more, and I wanted to see from the quick start. I wanted to see some of the uh, scenes or some of the uh, the the bad guys or uh, monsters from the uh, quick start. I would really love to see art for those. So maybe we'll get that in the uh, starter in the starter box. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get started for this week. It's going to be just me talking to myself. I'll probably try to refer to chat a little bit. Um, so if you have any uh, response to what I'm talking about, uh, p please feel free to uh, chime in because I uh, yeah I'm going to need to. <laughs> I just the the topics especially this week. There's not. Uh, uh, I, I need an opposing opinion. So um, anybody in the chat, anybody lurking, feel free to chime in. So let's get started for this week. <clears throat> Welcome to the weekly. I'm Jeremy. And unfortunately, another solo cast this week. So a workplace, uh, some positive tests at a workplace, and uh, Chris is not available. So hopefully next week. And unfortunately, that cancels all my plans for our third anniversary. So this is uh, episode 156. So I'm just, uh, we, we didn't evenly, especially over the pandemic, we didn't e e evenly uh, release episodes. So I'm just going by numbers. Uh, but our third year of doing the weekly, weekly. And uh, yeah, I wanted to... Uh, just commemorate that a little bit, but uh, we'll we'll postpone that for next week. But yeah, three years, three years of the weekly. So that's good to, uh, uh, yeah, it's good to we're 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 getting there, feeling more, uh, uh, yeah, more I guess established with uh, what we're doing this week. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Matt. Uh, happy anniversary, and thank you uh, to Matt uh, last week. If you listened to the uh, either the podcast or the uh, uh, live stream. Uh, Matt was my host and, or co-host, and uh, we uh, covered the um, uh, topics last week. Very, <laughs> very fun way. There's some some good stuff there. So check that out. And uh, so this week on the weekly, Black God's Kiss uh, RPG Kickstarter, Fly Monkeys Fly, the uh, Monkey Trouble at uh, Wizards of the Coast with Spelljammer. A Monty Python officially licensed tabletop RPG, so you can officially licensedly quote Monty Python, <laughs> and an Elric board game release. So let's start with uh, this. This was a really uh, interesting Kickstarter that jumped out to me. So Black God's Kiss is uh, now on Kickstarter, um, a perilous setting playable uh, as an RPG module. Uh, compatible both with 5e and old school essentials and they also are producing for this campaign a standalone two-player mini game that incorporates a lot of the themes of the uh the setting as well so um uh, it has custom rules for humanity loss streamlined mechanics for enduring cosmic horror in an eldritch pocket dimension so if you don't know the story uh black god's kiss the pulp story um it's based on the uh, fantasy fiction of cl moore who uh, is maybe one of the m more under-recognized, underrepresented um, sword and sorcery uh, weird tale pulp writers. So she uh, wrote for uh, Weird Tales, and uh, it probably is overshadowed a little bit by Howard and uh, Lovecraft, but um, uh, created the very first pulp uh, fantasy uh, character. Oh, sorry. With um, I'm not sure. I think Black God's Kiss might have been the, the first... Uh, the first appearance of the character, but created the first uh, female uh, protagonist for uh, pulp, and and uh, yeah, was kind of uh, strangely excluded from the original appendix and uh, Gygax's like list of um, 
you know, inspirations for D&D. But I think they uh, they fixed that in the uh, first edition uh, Dungeon, <laughs> Dungeon Master's Guide for, uh, under inspirational sources. So, um, yeah, so the setting is uh, uh, based on on that story. And there were subsequent stories that kind of continued that same setting. Uh, so now you can follow, and it's uh, Jure Joy, uh, Jure uh, of Jory, Jure de Jory, the first uh, female warrior and not, uh, you know, their typical kind of bikini clad barbarian, but a warrior of faith willing to give her soul to, uh, for her kingdom. So she must travel the depths of the hellas dimension to accept an accursed boon from a dark god. So that's the, the basis of the story. And uh, so the um, uh, pledge levels for this uh, campaign include... Uh, of course, a digital uh, digital set, a core set, a deluxe set. And then the deluxe set is actually a miniature. And the thing that jumped out to me right away is I recognized the sculptor of the miniature, uh, Knucklebones, uh, on, on Patreon. The uh, the sculptor behind the Knucklebones Patreon of uh, miniatures did the um, uh, the Black God, the, the, the miniature for the Black God. And it's it's, it's wonderful. His work is is amazing. It's it's old school, but computer you know, computer sculpted at the same time. It has a really nice feel. So that's part of the um, uh, part of the deluxe version is a uh, miniature, and there's things like posters and T-shirts and things. So this whole um, the both the RPG and the micro game are uh, written by Jenica Stuckey. So Jenica Stuckey uh, is a an artist, poet, and occultist. So. Um, headed a few occultist organizations and has published some uh, books with the, that, that sort of bent. So I think, uh, you know, C.L. Moore was a big inspiration uh, for his work. So, um, yeah, that's a, uh, uh, a good person to have kind of helming this. It's not, you know, just someone that's buying an IP. It's someone that's inspired by the work. And Seporophial, Seporophial is the artist. And I was amazed so much of the art. So a um, ink and graphite illustrator from the Arizona desert, um, and so the illustrations and work is actually, you know, physically done, uh, physical pieces. So there's original pieces. It's not digital production. Um, and so really beautiful uh, pieces. They, the illustrations for the, um, for the RPG are great. And it's nice to see that the, it's actually analog <laughs> art instead of just the you know, endless amount of digital so check that out. I'll put a, a link in the description for the uh, the current uh, Kickstarter. And if you have any interest in Pulp and want to try a new setting, either with 5e or uh, OSE, um, that is a good option. And uh, just yeah, just see what you think. I was really uh, uh, I liked seeing this sort of more indie uh, approach to uh, incorporating Pulp settings instead of one of the big guys doing it. Um, it's nice to see a smaller production. All right, so here is where Chris is going to be sadly missed. Hey, Abyss, how's it going? <laughs> oh, Matt. Oh, that's, that's right. I'll, I'll, I'll address the T-shirt situation uh, at the end of the podcast. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, Chris will be sorely missed for this, but Dungeons & Dragons has apologized for the Hadouzi lore and issues errata for Spelljammer books. Uh, so their statement was, um, they formally apologized, and their statement uh, goes along these lines. We wanted to acknowledge, uh, uh, to acknowledge and own the inclusion of offensive material within our recent Spelljammer Adventures in Space content. We failed you, our players and our fans, and we are truly sorry. So they... Uh, uh, said that they, you know the content was not properly vetted, and this is going to be an endless thing. As they try, it's going to be something in Dragonlands. The, if they ever try Dark Sun, it's going to be endless apologies. They are just going to have to pasteurize, <laughs> homogenize. Uh, you know the uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, just distill everything down to a flavorless gray mush if they want to release it in the current uh, current situation with current Wizards of the Coast. So I don't know why they're, they're even trying. Um, yeah, they, they already, you know, put their warnings all over all the stuff on DraftThruRPG, the old, old school digital stuff. So anyhow, statement goes on to say, throughout the 50-year history of Dungeons & Dragons, some of the characters in the game have been monstrous and evil, using descriptions that are painfully reminiscent of how real-world groups have, have been and continue to be denigrated. <clears throat> so, uh, the we understand the urgency of 
changing how we work to better ensure a more inclusive game. We are eternally grateful to the ongoing dialogue with the D&D community, and we look forward to introducing new and engaging and inclusive content for D&D for generations to come. And uh, they ended the statement by saying, D&D teaches that diversity is strength for only a diverse group of adventurers can overcome the many challenges uh, D&D story presents. In that spirit, we are committed to making D&D uh, a, as welcome and inclusive as possible. Uh, that this part of our work will never end. <laughs> no, this this type of uh, uh, targeted uh, yeah, harassment and sniping of old content will never end. So, uh, yeah. So in previous titles, they had have hired um, sensitivity consultants, which I guess they didn't do because they maybe just rushed this one out the door. But um, yeah. So it goes on. Uh, uh, to detail kind of the things that, uh, and so it's basically the the origin uh, that they're referring to of this race, and it's changed. So th this is a race that originally appeared, um, didn't re originally appear in D and D. It was a Star Frontiers, uh, the Yazirians in Star Frontiers, uh, which are the you know inspiration, which just means they just copy and pasted it over, and in, in various editions, um, they uh, uh, included details about how they were created and uh, so it's references to slavery and eugenics that people are um, reacting to i think the first tweet i saw based on this is okay now can we finally call wizards of the coast racist because this is definite proof of that so everybody's just jumping on this so um yeah so the, the only comment i have about this is a basically one word to both sides okay so cowards all right, both sides are cowards about this. So Wizards of the Coast are capitulating to this. And pretty soon, once things are all digital, you're going to be reading reading a digital document for one D&D, &D, and it's going to be changing as you're, the words are going to be edited as you're reading it. So you won't be able to finish a sentence in the book without this you know, endless errata. And it's going to start happening. Hopefully they'll hire some AI or they'll create some AI that will just uh, uh, be able to do it on the fly. So it really hangs out you know, uh, really screws over. Uh, companies like the uh, the Beetle and Grimm's and the people that are doing uh, exclusive uh, editions and things, so they, they don't have a finished text of this book. So what you're going to be buying this expensive limited edition version of this Spelljammer set, and it's going to have this stuff in it that people are objecting to, and it's not, you know, so it's endless. It's going to be an endless nonsense. And, and apologizing like this, is not doing anything. It's such a corporate, it, you know, it, it, the wording is so corporate and it's, you know, they just have to say, uh, this stuff is flawed. You know, the stuff that we're trying to bring is flawed and we're trying not to, you know, we're trying not to carry over anything that people, things that people might find objectable, but you don't have to bring that to your table. You can literally rip the page out of the book or, you know, just delete, delete it out of a PDF you know, it, just because it's included in one of their publications and it, it's just this, uh, you know, th this carryover, this legacy carryover, I think you need to uh, uh, just have a sense of context and a sense of uh, history of this and not be so reactive. But it's a, it's a hobby. So on the other hand, the, the cowards, are, so Wizards of the Coast is cowards for constantly apologizing, constantly d deleting this stuff. And the other side is cowards for going after a toy company for, you know, things that are triggering and things that are related to real world, is world issues. Why don't you confront real world issues? There still is slavery and human trafficking, and you could actively do something uh, as an activist uh, for these real world issues and not things that just remind you of them, but how they exist in the real world. So my challenge to you, the, uh, the internet activists that love going after Wizards of the Coast, don't stop until the uh, Dungeons and Dragons property has changed their name completely. So until it's called Pencils and Paper, your job is not finished. You have to remove everything from this game because dungeons only remind us that the monarchy, you know, placed their political enemies and, uh, you know, pro uh, people that they saw as dangerous uh, to, their, uh, to their rule in dungeons. So obviously that's a classist-based horrible thing that we can't even uh, think about. And dragons, dragons, the... the um, Use of dragons, the functions of dragons in mythology and cultures varies too much between the East and the West. And there's no way you could possibly settle on a definition of what a dragon is, how it functions in a setting, 
you know, whether it's, an, it's a nature spirit or whether it's a monster, whether it has intelligence, there's no way to resolve this. So d- dragons need to be removed. Dungeons need to be removed. So until you successfully convince Wizards of the Coast to change the name of the game to Pencils and Paper, your job is not finished. So there you go. There's your challenge. That's exactly the world you, you want to live in. So there you go. That's, that's your goal. <laughs> Anyhow, don't you wish Chris was here? <laughs> Anyhow, Chris would have interrupted that at some point. Uh, but <clears throat> moving on <coughs> to a bunch uh, a nicer topic or fu- funnier topic, more odd topic. But see, my, my temporary virtual co-host is still enthusiastic about what's going on here. An official Monty Python RPG is coming to Kickstarter. So Monty Python's co-curricular medieval reenactment program spelled the british way with double m's and an e <laughs> uh is going it's going to be released uh so, so this is an officially licensed product that is going to contain inspirations from of course their performances musical albums the flying circus uh, tv series holy grail and life of brian so anything that you could kind of you know include with um I don't know, swords and sandals or a medieval, uh, a medieval setting you can uh, uh, expect to find in this RPG. So a mock medieval world in which uh, players set out on epic quests in Middle Ages Britain. King of the Britons. <laughs> Who are the Britons? Uh, so yeah, a dose of Python-esque absurdity. So now you will have officially licensed annoying people quoting Python at your table. And maybe you can even, there'll be like a, a, a glossary or something where you can, you know, just have all of your spam and uh, lumberjack references all, you know, pre-prepared for you. So as they come up, you can just, or there's a table, a random table to ro- roll on with Monty Python quotes. <laughs> all right. I drank Chris's iced coffee as well. So that's what, that's what's happening here. Uh, so uh, it's an original gameplay system. It's said to be rules light and designed for one shot sessions and shorter campaigns. So uh, replacing the stock classes as seen in D&D uh, inspired by situations and a roster of ridiculous uh, Python's ridiculous on-screen characters. So it could be fun. I mean, I don't think that any of the original Pythons were big role players. <laughs> so I, I but you can't deny, though, that a lot of people like in America that watched uh, Monty Python on PBS probably did get into role playing. So there is that. Yeah, there is that crossover. I just don't think uh, the original uh, original actors had much uh, <laughs> had much interest <laughs> in rolling d20s. So um, encounter tests will use a, a a d4 to a d20 to determine how silly or serious uh, the, and relevant uh, traits <laughs> the relevant relevant traits of the current levels are. So rolling critical or fail will shift the traits towards either end of the scale. So we have either silly or serious. <laughs> Uh, as well as triggering consequences and random rule tables will give you surreal outcomes. All right. Well, uh, so um, from characters being abducted by aliens, arrested, or just plain killed. So, yeah, I guess, you know, there's there's children and grandchildren <laughs> that the Pythons had. So hopefully this money will be going to them. This licensed money will be going to them. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this plays. And if it's people that are that are true fans, the true lovers of tabletop and true fans of Python, maybe it'll be a fun, a fun tribute to that. And it'll uh, uh, give people extra. It, you'll have the green light then to reference for every money Python reference you ever wanted. All right. So um, yeah. So um, a player controls. Uh, <laughs> the, oh, each session is the head of light entertainment. Oh, no. Standing in for the traditional game master. The head of light entertainment is uh, assigned one of 20 different personalities from sports fanatic to stuffy historian. Oh, wow. So there's going to be a lot of serious, <laughs> serious role play in this system. So it does sound like fun. And it's uh, Exalted Funeral is going to be uh, the publishing it. And the designer, um, yeah. So, so we'll see how this uh, how this turns out. So, at least it's an you know an indie designer, and uh, not as as before, as I was saying before, and not a big uh, a big company trying to take advantage of a license. I think with using licenses, if there's a little more love and a little bit more you know direct, uh, you know enthusiasm <laughs> instead of corporate enthusiasm put in into something you'll probably have an overall better product 
So we'll see how this comes out when the uh, Kickstarter comes out later later this month. I think, yeah, maybe at the end of this month. I'm, I'm looking for a date. I'm looking for a date. So we'll, um, I think, see this in uh, in September. So good luck. Yes, you got the Spanish Inquisition and all sorts of fun things in the, uh, as they refer to, the Python verse. So, yeah, I guess you have to join the Python fandom and become part of the Python verse to enjoy the game. What yeah, what has happened to things? Anyhow, uh, yeah, so uh, I'll put a link to that as well when it comes out. Actually, there's nothing, yeah, it, it, there's nothing out yet uh, for it. So it's an upcoming Kickstarter, but it's getting a, a, a big push on a lot of uh, gaming media. So I thought I would mention it. And the last thing, another, uh, another um licensed game <laughs> but this one stood out a little bit too um is this another kickstarter as well <laughs> probably another kickstarter as well um a couple of uh, french designers frederic chancel and uh, jean baptiste uh, lillian L lillian uh who previously worked on uh such games as i believe zombicide and um the uh mess of darkness uh have been working on a two to four player board game based on the 1960s uh, fantasy universe of Elric of Mandibin. Mandibin. <laughs> I say it in my head correct every time. I just can't say it out loud. Mel Nibine. Mel, yes, yes, Mel Nibine. And uh, it's called Elric Rise of the Young Kingdoms. And so the board game uh, is going to be set in the Imrier, Imrier uh, the Dreaming City, the capital of the Mandibine, Mandibinean Empire. I don't know what the adjective is. Um, and so, uh, so how would you how would you design an Elric board game when any everybody playing would want to play Elric? Well, you are playing. Uh, so Elric is leading the rebellion against the uh, the the current rules of the rulers of the city, and you play the the uh, the roles of various nations supporting Elric in this uh, conquest of uh, of the city as well. So these nations include uh, Lormir, uh, the Purple Towns, uh, Picarid. The uh, back, <laughs> back chain and Tarkesh. So um, each of these have their own advantages and troop types that are uh, that you can deploy to assist in the overthrow. So you're you're trying to overthrow the city's defenses, ransack and share loot from the city, and then that loot you can use against the other kingdoms to kind of increase your favor with Elric and uh, increase your role in this uh, this overthrow of the city. But the uh, the city itself is going to fight back. So there's this this raising, uh, this mechanic of threat. So these threat cards uh, increase uh, the the kind of resistance that the city is throwing out, and it'll eventually lead to counterattacks, fires, and even dragons <laughs> attacking you in your um, attempted overthrow of the city. So yes, yeah, so it's a couple of designers, and this is being released. Uh, the studio, um, it's their debut design. So this is La Departement uh, French. Uh, which I'm mispronouncing, a studio is releasing Rise of the Young Kingdoms. And uh, so a couple of designers that have worked with Kaman before. And the uh, video they did for the game, uh, it, it, there's it's miniatures. And the thing that's very interesting is it's hex-based. The areas are he hexagonal, so I think they can be placed, like generated uh, more randomly, or there's you know different uh, uh, configurations. But they also have elevation. So it's very interesting. Like It's like a giant... Uh, uh, giant hero scape. <laughs> so they're really big hexes and there's different elevations, which probably represent the like, different territories or, or getting closer to uh, uh, invading territories that get closer to uh, overthrowing the actual uh, rulers themselves. But it has a nice look on the table. The artwork for the uh, cards is nice. The uh, miniatures look good. And uh, so it looks like a, yeah, a decent board game. I mean, it's got to be hard. I think leaving, hopefully they have enough connection to the resources and uh, for production and distribution because come on, it must be hard to leave come on unless they are, they're going to be the publisher. It's going to be hard to leave come on and uh, uh, actually produce a board game. So we'll see how uh, the debut title for uh, Le Departement uh, does. And uh, it's a great, it's a great property and uh, looks interesting. looks like interesting gameplay. It reminds me um, a little bit of how they did the um, uh, Solomon Cain game. So, you know, a Solomon Cain board game. Everyone just wants to play Solomon Cain. So, what what do the players actually do? They play the graces, and the, you know, they manipulate the behavior of the character uh, through these scenarios. So, in a similar way, you know, you're having this influence and uh, allegiance to Elric uh, during this campaign. So, um, yeah. So it is it is going to be uh, Kickstarter, 
and the uh, starting pledge will be about $75 US, and uh, the game is expected to ship in November of 2023. Wow, so you've got until September 30th to pledge this on Kickstarter in November 2023. Uh, so we've got a, a year, a little bit more than a year, uh, and it should be out. So yeah, we'll see, but you know, it's board games and it's supply chain and all that good stuff. So we will see. But yeah, that is, uh, that's everything I wanted to talk about. And not only to myself, but I actually wanted to talk about with Chris, but we'll try to do that next, uh, next week. So yeah, this is the third, third anniversary of the weekly. So, um, yeah, we've been doing this almost weekly. I think we got interrupted through the pandemic a little bit and I've had uh, some wonderful guest hosts help me throughout the years. And this originally started, uh, when things shut down and we were still Idle Red Hands, it was the Idle Red Hands Weekly because we got disappeared. <laughs> the podcast got disappeared off of uh, uh, Apple Podcasts because of uh, software software issues on the website. So uh, it was an attempt to just get back uh, active and start getting, uh, you know, building up the subscribers and everything by having a regular weekly release. And it just turned into a fun thing that we were able to do on Chris's lunchtime. So it worked well. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone who's been uh, listening and watching for all this time. And anyone uh, new that's been lurking, uh, please uh, yeah, feel free to uh, uh, sh uh, say something in the comments. And uh, we usually respond. So how this works is we live stream the recording of the podcast. But then the audio for the uh, entire live stream goes onto the Patreon RSS feed so you can hear everything. So uh, after we officially end uh, the, the podcast, there's actually more content. I look at the chat and we do kind of Q&A stuff and just discussion, uh, further discussion of the topics. So if you'd like to hear that um, through your favorite podcast player, um, please visit patreon.com slash upturn table and become a weakling. And then you can give us direct feedback about what you want to see on the weekly and how things are going. So uh, I'll put Chris's links, uh, social media links uh, down below. So check out what's going on there. And an example of something, I think I've mentioned it on my, my my weekly live stream that I do for drawing my cartoon, but here's one of the panels, because um, I'm in the office where that used to be the gallery, so here's one of the panels that I did, the smaller ones, that I did of my cartoons. So I, I did acrylic, just acrylic reproductions uh, of my uh, cartoons on a panel, so it's a, it's a wooden, a wooden panel. I did some really large ones as well, but that wouldn't fit on camera, um, but I draw this cartoon uh, abuse cartoon uh, on uh, abuse cartoons on youtube and twitch uh, domestic abuse is the name of the cartoon i draw domestic abuse weekly on a live stream uh so two cartoons a week and they go on go comics so gocomics.com slash domestic abuse and uh it's the 20th anniversary uh, lots of anniversaries uh, this year is the 20th anniversary of this cartoon so that's the other thing that i do uh weekly aside from uh this podcast is uh cartooning and on that live stream as well, I so I draw the cartoon and eat snacks from the uh, Japanese <laughs> convenience store. So just try to break up the monotony of uh, drawing and coloring and, and writing a cartoon with uh, something a little bit more distracting. So uh, yeah, tune into that. And if you'd like, uh, oh, yeah, I've already talked about what what to do to support. So Upturn Table. Oh yeah, and uh, this is just a test. This is a test print for Upturn Table T-shirts. Um, so it's not going to be probably the uh, company that we're going to use, but I wanted to see, um, what kind of quality I could get from, uh, Japanese companies and then also look at the, uh, you know, like Teespring and uh, Redbubble and some of the other ones. So this graph is, uh, yeah, it's all set to be produced. Uh, so I'm going to set up an account with one of the, uh, uh, companies and put a link to that, but yeah, so expect, uh, expect merch soon. I want to do some, um, uh, coffee mugs as well. I think that would be nice to have on the... <laughs> on the live stream so uh anybody interested you can contact me directly because I, I did a few uh a few different uh, tests of this shirt so maybe we can we can work something out so uh yeah there's no store officially set up yet but um yeah i'm working on uh upturn table merch at the moment and i think a white t-shirt with the uh the weekly might be fun too because i like that that bright sunny uh view at the train window so we'll see how that uh, how that goes so thanks for joining me, and uh, hopefully next week Chris will be with us, uh, barring any spread of infection. It seems like the uh, employees that they acquired are, um, they came in in pretty bad shape. <laughs> so like, how'd you like to start a job and then instantly have to do quarantine? Uh, must be fun. So join us next week, and uh, we'll do the same thing. And until then, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, check out the uh, live stream and uh, live stream for abuse cartoons and then what Chris is up to. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. 
All right. So I'll do uh, 30 seconds uh, to get this, the, the, the fan. I think I've got a dying fan on the computer as well. I'll do the... <laughs> Uh, the the fan uh, needs to be taken out. It's pretty noisy in here. So uh, give me 30 seconds and I'll be right back. All right. I was going to take a drink of iced coffee. While I, I'm trying to record silence, and I would have done this on the microphone. Ugh. The level of professionalism is so lacking. All right. So let's take a look in the chat. And yeah, thanks again, uh, Matt, for hanging out with me. Um, oh, yeah, K5. Yeah, so this is... Um, I, can, I can move this around a little bit more. So you can see this is a wood panel. Um, a wood panel that I did of my uh, cartoons. And I think these are actually, a part, half of the series that I did for these is in a ramen shop somewhere in Japan as well. <laughs> yeah, they sold, they sold pretty well when I first did them. So I did some pretty large, uh, some like A0, uh, so yeah, like triple triple A3 size or quadruple A3 size, really large uh, wooden panels. And I just reproduced uh, some of my more interesting and colorful uh, cartoons. I either put the joke or just put a, 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 a caption from there. And uh, so, yeah, this is actually acrylic on a panel. And it was uh, something I produced uh, early on from my cartoon. All right. Oh, Matt, yeah, notice the uh, Elric game <laughs> Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I'm, yeah, I, I might uh, do the same, depending on who's publishing it, too. Uh, the Elric game. It looks pretty good. Yeah, check out that, that video. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. We need to live closer, Matt, so we can actually, like, both uh, <laughs> both benefit from one of us pledging a game. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, and the uh, the all Adderalled up uh, little pink haired girl is uh, yeah, always the temporary co host when Chris isn't here, <laughs> just so the screen isn't so lopsided. Uh, nice. <laughs> a tossed salad, you like that? Yeah, there's a lot of subtle, <laughs> subtle salad remarks. Oh, hey, so uh. How's it going, Sorrel? Um, off topic, uh, but do you have any opinions on Wild Magic Barbarians from 5e? Oh, wow. I want to rewrite the table since it seems unbalanced unless you're playing at third level and nothing more than that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I haven't... Wow, I haven't looked at the um, uh, subclasses for... We don't play much 5e, and so it's really hard. I think I... we <laughs> Chris was at the table literally for half a session of a pirate-themed 5e uh, campaign that we're going to run, and that's about it. So I haven't kept up much on 5e. I know a lot of other players in our group have other groups that they uh, they do pretty seriously, uh, seriously uh, involved in long campaigns with 5e. But no, I don't know uh, subclass, uh, like Barbarian subclass uh, in 5e. I just like to bitch about Wizards of the Coast. I actually haven't kept up on a lot of the mechanics. But thanks for watching, and um, uh, sorry I couldn't be more helpful. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, not familiar... Um, yeah, you know, with the new subclasses, and it's so amazing. I was just looking at a uh, a new. Probably they tried to time it with uh, Spelljammer, a new kind of sci-fi. You know, they're calling it an astral setting for five E that adds subclasses and, and a an astral race and things. But the artwork is really beautiful. But it's just you know subclasses and subclasses and subclasses. So you've got like a, a, a paladin, you know, like astral cosmic subclass and stuff. There's some pretty crazy stuff. All right. Oh, Unknown Girl, how's it going? Yes, thanks. Yeah, three years. Three years of weekly podcasts. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and it used to be um, so much harder to produce until we came up with the idea of like doing it as a live stream and then just editing that audio uh, with so much more. And uh, Alabaster, thank you so much. Thanks for being in the chat. Yes, yes, 20, yeah, 20 years of this. Uh, so, yeah, take, take a look at the... Um, the pre, uh, most recent abuse cartoons live streams i'm going through the old archive so you can see what the cartoon looked like 20 years ago it looked like some crazy scratching with a uh, a sharpie <laughs> on some uh, uh paper oh thanks link 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 um oh insta buy oh thanks matt yeah yeah um doing uh uh shirts yeah the um I, and i wanted to i think 
I might like this, even though um, the the design original design is like on a dark blue. Uh, background, so I wanted to recreate that as much as possible. When they do that, the printing that they do now, the digital kind of, uh, it's almost like an inkjet, like a screen printing. When they do stuff on light shirts, to get the ink to show up, they do a, a pass of white, and then they do a pass of the color, so the color really pops. But I don't know if it, you probably can't see it on camera, but it's always just like a, a half a millimeter, like, you know, you see the white, so there's like a weird, a little bit offset. It's never perfect registration when they do that. So everything's got little bits of, of white around it. So it looks nice, you know, from a distance and really pops. But when you look close, um, it's always, you know, obviously, and it's probably just based on machine, like machine to machine there. However, it's, it's calibrated or, um, uh, you know, kept up to, uh, uh, make, uh, ma maintained, um, probably determines that, but yeah, so this on maybe a light colored shirt without the white on the background might look nice. Cause I like that more soaked in when the ink is, uh, more soaked into the shirt as well. I think that looks nice. Yes, yes. So uh, K5, this is an original, the uh, <laughs> the panel. I just did a, a series of them, so I just have a few random ones left. Uh. <laughs> yes, go find me to get Matt to Japan, K5 said yes. That's right. That, that should be a pledge level is uh, Matt's uh, having uh, Matt co-host for for like a, an entire week or entire like month or something as with a visit to Japan, that would be perfect. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We have a pretty tiny couch, unfortunately. You have to, uh, you have to kind of be in the fetal position the whole time. Uh, oh, Matt's had nothing to do this uh, live stream without uh, Abyss <laughs> active in the chat. Mm. Sorry for the uh, ice cube ASMR. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get back uh, get back to a more normal schedule after things calm down uh, with Chris. As this has been really, uh, they merged like two companies merged, or there was a buyout, and then so there's a bunch of new employees, and then everyone got sick. And I can imagine if it's Japanese office style too, they're probably just cramming everybody in because they don't do cubicles here um, for the most part. It's more open banks of desks. So basically, you've got a person on either side of you and a person across from you. And of course, then diagonal, too, because they do these little groupings of desks. And I think with the newer, um, you know, kind of protocols and stuff in offices, at least there's acrylic screens now between people. But previously, the only thing you're like, you know, blocking having to stare right into someone's face is a computer monitor. So, um, yeah, Japanese offices. And if you're picturing a desk kind of probably take that down about 40%. <laughs> That's the size of a Japanese desk. Really tiny. So you're sitting right next to someone the whole time. So I can imagine um, if they just acquired a whole bunch of uh, new employees and don't have a lot of space for them, they're cramming people together and then the infections. Yeah, so that's crazy. Oh yeah, K5, yeah, that is that is crazy. Uh, the uh, Queen of England has passed. That's really insane, a 70 year rule. That's I can't even uh, imagine that, and her son is going to have what like a ten year rule. <laughs> I guess though her and her husband were both lived into their nineties, so maybe he'll be around for a couple of decades. But uh, yeah, that was quite a run. Yeah, uh, Matt said yeah she had a good run. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, to be a, a monarch in your twenties and then to do it until you're in your nineties. It's crazy. Oh, so, yeah, we'll see uh, what happens to the world <laughs> after that. I don't think much is much is going to change. So, yeah, a new prime minister and a new monarch in the same month. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really crazy to think about all the cultural changes and everything that one, you know, dynasty, one rule, or whatever word you use, oh, yeah, one rule, encompass. Because, you know, in, in Japan, they mark that the emperor kind of marks the eras, and people give, even though it's not really, you know, that accurate, they name things by the, uh, who was the ruling emperor. It's the same, same way we say, you know, Victorian England or, you know, Edwardian England or whatever. Um, and that has a, a character to it. And you think of there's politics and social trends and things. They do the same thing in Japan, even though it's not really that true. You know, things don't follow. I mean, I guess, yeah. So it's just like saying your image of the 70s and then you, you, you are just calling that by the uh, the era's name. Yes. <laughs> the new wonderful Liz Truss. 
Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, but I think that's, that's funny. I mean, of course, you know, being American, we don't have that at all. Um, maybe we, we say a little bit with presidencies like the Obama era or the, you know, Reagan era that conjures kind of images in, in people's minds about what was going on. Um, and so it's, it's just a, yeah, a weird correlation, th um, that doesn't really, isn't, doesn't really have much to do with anything. Uh, Abyss said something to envy, uh, to live that long, but quality of life goes down hard at that end. Yeah, right, right, right. And very unpredictable. Like once you're in your 90s, it's like, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're dead. <laughs> it's like things just, uh, they go south really fast. So you have, uh, yeah, failing health like just comes uh, very in a very surprising uh, way, which is good not to suffer, though. I think it's good to just kind of go out quick instead of lingering, you know, because that's a, there's a lot of, uh, ways you can be ill at the end of your life. Let's not go down this dark road, but yeah, there's a lot of ways to linger and be miserable and be in horrible pain and to be a you know a huge financial burden. Not even not that a queen would be, but yeah, the, uh, us commoners, uh, our regular um, people having to deal with that kind of stuff. That's got to be really rough to uh, just you know financially drain a family as you're lingering on. Uh, but anyhow, yeah. So. Um, yeah, it was really fun. So uh, I mentioned it uh, before we started uh, Dragonbane. Yeah, so Dragonbane, uh, Free League's Dragonbane is really fun. So check out that uh, Kickstarter if you haven't and you're interested at all. I think it's an in a nice way to update uh, that legacy and hopefully it will continue. I just, yeah, I wish there was a way the name that the name could carry over uh, better. And the same way that it was like called Trudvang, Trudvang Chronicles when uh, Riot Minds did it, but they give, give, give a whole new system and whatever. But um, yeah, it's too bad that it doesn't work well uh, to just to translate it more directly. But as soon as people understand that that connection, then I think it'll work well, or that it'll 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 you know have a part in the legacy. Uh, yeah. So it's really yeah, really crazy. So yeah, I appreciate everybody that's in the chat. Thank you for always being here for our little weekly thing <laughs> and uh, yeah we'll, we'll try to keep adding more and doing uh yeah better and better things so yeah any feedback let us know in the patreon or even in uh comments below this video about uh you know what if you'd like to see like more specific like micro reviews and stuff that might be a fun thing to uh uh, add to the weekly is just very short because when we were doing originally with the original uh, podcast we did like two hour reviews of game systems and things um, but then we would also do a quick little like you know 12 minute uh, compressed version of that so maybe doing micro reviews and stuff and that might be something I could lean more heavily into uh, when Chris wasn't here is uh, uh, doing little little concise reviews and opinions about specific games and stuff that might be a nice thing to add because just doing the, the news topics, you know, we uh, uh, talk about stuff, you know, coming out, uh, bundles and things that are available, and then also just kind of news in tabletop. So, uh, yeah, just let us know uh, the kinds of content that would make it more, you know, what you'd want to listen to every week. And I guess, yeah, it's, um, yeah, different tabletop podcasts kind of fluctuate between that, you know, doing uh, reviews and, and kind of current events or just... Uh, uh, yeah, just talking about <laughs> what they're doing in the uh, in their gaming hobby. Oh, that's not gonna clean up well. <laughs> all right, so yeah, hope everyone is uh, doing well, and you don't have all kinds of horrible infections <laughs> at your workplace. I can't believe it's still going on here. I think because um, uh, you know Japan is kind of being penalized for. Um, you know, quarantining and following rules and masking and everything really well, because all that does is just prolong the time that people will get the infection because eventually everyone has to get it. So the better you are at not getting it, the longer you're making everything, <laughs> you're dry, drawing everything out. And um, they've, they've shortened officially, I think, to five days, the length of time, you know, to take off work or whatever. So hopefully Chris will be back and, and Chris is fine. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah, um, definitely in parts. I was um, doing, so I, I started editing, uh, the, so the Blade Runner actual play. Thank you, Matt, for bringing that up. Um, yeah, I've been editing the audio for that, and uh, um, I started it in audition, and I hate audition. I, I like, I guess I like it once I have like finished audio tracks and I'm just adding background music and sound effects and stuff. 
but I don't like it for specifically like editing, uh, you know, little coughs and little tiny pieces. It's not very accurate. Um, Audacity is actually much better. You get a much better waveform representation, and it, it, it's you can take little tiny things out and clean the audio up much better. So I started it in uh, Audition, and I, I don't like it's it's going really slowly. So I think I'm going to switch back to um, uh, Audacity and edit the tracks down there, and then sweeten them with you know music and sound effects and stuff. After that. So that's taking a little bit of time and it, it's like 10 hours. So I think I'm going to try either one or two hour parts. So it's going to come out in, in several parts. So if I can find good break points that are around, you know, 90 minutes to two hours um, so that it's more uh, more listenable. But yeah, yeah, that's definitely uh, I will get the first part of that up as, as soon as I can. I just want it to, to take out it, to clean it up and make it as listenable as possible. And unfortunately, the way that I started editing it was uh, not working well. I don't like, yeah, I don't like Audacity. Or I don't like, I do like Audacity. I don't like Audition, oh, the other awe. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, um, people really have to uh, hear that. That would be fun. Uh, 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 it was a really fun uh, playthrough of the uh, that first case file for Blade Runner. And Blade Runner is not even shipped yet. So uh, yeah, we'll be getting more Blade Runner soon. But yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll Make sure that that uh, comes out. Yeah, so I was thinking, I might do some narr. Oh, oh, oh! Might have to do some narration for the Bla uh, Dragon Bane. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Might actually physically. Yeah, what I was gonna do too for um, uh, Blade Runner is uh, show kind of what was on the virtual tabletop because we didn't use you know uh, tokens and uh, uh, maps. Like we weren't crawling uh, grids for Blade Runner. We we're just moving locations. So I was going to just kind of throw all of the photos and things, um, all of the, you know, evidence and clues and things that people had, the players had visible uh, while they were doing the certain parts. So just as kind of a background to what was going on. But you know, that's a good point, uh, Matt. We might have to uh, uh, show show things on the uh, the map. Yeah, I should have I should have thought of that too. It would have been probably better to record, record what was going on with our tokens on the map on... Um, uh, yeah, it, that would have been a good thing to record. <laughs> so I'll have to recreate it for the most part. Uh, yeah, good point, good point. Uh, nice. Oh, great, Abyss, yeah, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll get that together, and, uh, yeah, it, the, uh, especially, I got some good, like, royalty-free, uh, Blade Runner-esque music, so it'll have a nice atmosphere and everything, and hopefully if I can cut it into interesting pieces, it'll be fun to listen to the progression of the story, because it was a really kind of, uh, compelling, mystery and what uh will and matt did with it was great like how their characters interacted with those uh uh how their how their characters worked with that setting was great and i think that's a huge advantage to creating a character um as opposed to just playing a pre-gen because that that case file was originally meant for pre-gens but we we had the full rules we have the full, full pdf for the core book so we had a session zero and made characters and i think that really let the players um, do more interesting things uh, in that uh, in that in that case file in those uh, in that campaign that short campaign. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I will get that uh, get that out because that'll be something that'll be good uh, both on the um, as a podcast episode and also um, as a video. All right. Well, I think I'll wrap it up for this week. So I, I'll stop arguing with myself. <laughs> So a little bit shorter, but uh, I uh, I apologize. I uh, yeah, um, Chris had to cancel uh, very last minute, so I could have tuned things a little bit better for a solo cast had I known. But it was just yeah, you know, late last night they found out. But uh, yeah, and uh, more we'll, we'll be recording more. Um, uh, we've been doing audio through uh, Discord for our uh, play sessions uh, for the um, on the virtual tabletop stuff. So. Uh, and it seems to be working out pretty good. So we'll see. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> this is the first time I tried to kill Matt. <laughs> and then I stuck Matt behind a door that he couldn't get through. And the duck was getting more angry. And then the, the night was, the uh, yeah death night was killing everyone. <laughs> and Matt is breaking down a door. Uh, yes, yes. That was fun. All right. So yeah, everyone take care. And uh, we'll be back to do this next week. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hope 
hopefully get a, uh, a heads up from Chris uh, about next week a little bit earlier. So maybe we can do some uh, guest hosting kind of things to make it a little bit more fun. But thank you, as always. Uh, thanks to the patrons, because this is the uh, uh, part that you'll hear on the, the Patreon RSS. Thank you so much to the patrons for supporting what we're doing and uh, yeah, for just being there. It's a great... Uh, it's a great little uh, community, and feel free to uh, to join it if you're watching this on YouTube. And also uh, to uh, a YouTube being a YouTube member with the join button down below. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.